I'm back guys with another video, man. Oh. What do I even talk about to with you motherfuckers, man? What the fuck am I supposed to talk about with you motherfuckers? But um actually let's let's read the book. Let's read 48 Laws of Power today. I'm gonna go through the third chapter. We're gonna read along together, guys. And I'll just give you my own little uh, interpretation of the laws. I'm kind of bored right now. I'd really, really want to just sleep, watch a movie or something. But it's, uh, it says, this, this is my favorite one right here. In court, honesty is a fool's game. Never be so self-absorbed as to believe that the master is interested in your criticisms of him, of him no matter how accurate they are. What does that tell you? Well, that's the interpretation. I need to actually read the whole fucking law to understand the concept and to understand the reasoning and to understand the context in which that's being talked about. Yep, 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 yep. I talk a lot. This is a courtier, right? Play the perfect courtier. I remember reading this, man. It's kind of similar to jobs, right? You have to play different angles and different actors and... You have to wear this mask and you have to be this person that's a fucking asshole. But then at the same time, you got to be this person that's submissive. And then you got to be this person that's this. You know, you got to play different styles and different personalities according to the situation that you're in. It's interesting, you know. Now let's read the, the little uh, proverbs over here, like the little stories. This is for the per Play the Perfect Courtier Law 24. Not my favorite law. Honestly, my favorite law is the one where like you pose as a friend and act as a and and behave as a spy or is it yeah <laughs> ah, it's like law four or five i don't even remember i've had this book for so fucking long dude i've read all the chapters work as a spy yeah yeah i've read all the chapters but they're difficult to kind of understand sometimes law number seven is pretty good get others to do the work for you but always take the credit Use the wisdom, knowledge, and legwork of other people to further your own cause. Not only will such assistance, sa assistance save you valuable time and energy, it will give you a godlike aura of efficiency and speed. In the end, your helpers will be forgotten and you will be remembered. Never do yourself what others can do for you. Because it gets you to the destination quicker. You know, there's maybe, maybe there's, let me kind of explain it to you guys. Maybe there's two pathways to success. One goes this way and one goes the other way. You can go right or you can go left. Now the one on the right is a, a road that's filled with an arduous journey, filled with nestles and prickles and bushes, and the whole road is littered with danger. There's, 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 there's predators, there's lions, there's fucking lava, there's fucking crocodiles filled in lakes, then you gotta cross all these fucking hazardous elements. The road to the left, is easier quicker less hazards there's no there's, there's no danger involved in that left but then it's also filled with dishonesty betrayal um disloyal you know it's filled with a lot of lies and cunning but it's also the type the path that will take you to your destination a lot quicker but one path leads you to the destination quicker but you lose all of your morality and the other path, you'll you'll keep your morality, you'll keep your 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 humanity intact, but the other pathway is lot is a lot quicker. You may die taking that path. It's the right path, but you might die taking that path to get to that destination. It's like that. Now let's actually read law number seven. I don't know. I think it's fifth page fifty six. Um, let's read the whole law. Let's get into it right now. Get others to do the work for you, but always take the credit. Now let's read this one. Oh, Nikola Tesla. Oh, I, already, I already read this one, but let's read it again. Now let's read the proverb on the side. The tortoise, the elephant, and the hippopotamus. One day the, hip, the tortoise met the perp. <laughs> I need to like slow down a little bit. One day the tortoise met the elephant, who trumpeted, Out of my way, you weakling. I might step on you. The tortoise was not afraid and stayed where he was, so the elephant stepped on him but could not crush him. Do not boast, Mr. Elephant. I am as strong as you are, said the tortoise. But the reality is the tortoise is nowhere near as strong as the elephant. 
the only thing that the tortoise the tortoise has that shell that's protecting it from the elephant's foot and its mass and its power it's not as strong as it is, it is. Mr. Elephant, I am as strong as you are, said the tortoise. But the elephant just laughed, so the tortoise asked him to come to his hill the next morning. The next day, before sunrise, the tortoise ran down the hill to the river, where he met the hippopotamus, who was just on his way back into the water after his nocturnal feeding. Nocturnal is like animals that sleep during the day and hunt during the night. Or they are active during the night, but they sleep during the day. Mr. Hippo, shall we have a tug of war? I bet I am as strong as you are, said the tortoise. The hippopotamus laughed at this ridiculous idea, but agreed. The tortoise produced a long rope and told the hippo to hold it in his mouth, until the tortoise shouted, hey! Then the tortoise ran back up the hill, where he found the elephant, who was getting impatient. He gave the elephant the other end of the rope and said, when I say, hey, pull, and you'll see which of us is the strongest. Wow, he told the elephant, when I say, hey, pull, and you'll see which of us is the strongest. So he's very smart, you know, he, he told, he told the fucking hippopotamus, hey, when I say, hey, pull the fucking rope. And then he told, he told the elephant, when I say, hey, <laughs> what do you say again? When I say, hey, pull, and you'll see which of us is the strongest. Simple, make others do the work for you and always take the credit. It seems very kind of like a sociopath, right? A little bit. Then he ran halfway back down the hill to a place where he couldn't be seen and shouted, Hey! The elephant and the hippopotamus pulled and pulled, but neither could budge the other. They were of equal strength. They both agreed that the tortoise was as strong as they were. Never do what others can do for you. The tortoise let others do the work for him while he got the credit. Nothing is ever what it seems in, in life. You know, people will do whatever they can to try and get over on you and step on you. Now let's read the rest. To be sure, the hunter relies on the security of the carriage, utilizes the legs of the six horses and makes Wang Liang hold their reins. Then he will not tire himself and will find it easy to overtake swift animals. Now, supposing he discarded the advantage of the carriage, gave up the useful legs of the horses and the skill of Wang Liang, and alighted to run after the animals. Let me see how much charge I got left. All right, cool. Then, even though his legs were as quick as blue cheese, he would not be in time to overtake the animals. In fact, if good horses and strong carriages are taken into use, then mere... In fact, if good horses and strong carriages are taken into use, then mere bond men and bond women will be good enough to catch the animals. Everybody steals in commerce and industry. I've stolen a lot myself, but I know how to steal. See that? The blind hen. A hen who had lost her sight and was accustomed to scratching up the earth in search of food, although blind, still continued to scratch away most diligently. Of what use was it to the industrious fool? Another sharp-sighted hen who spared her tender feet, never moved from her side, and enjoyed without scratching the fruit of the other's labor. For as often as the blind hen scratched up a barley corn, her watchful companion devoured it. Now let's read the keys to power. I don't really want to read the background too much because I already read it. The world of power has the dynamics of the jungle. There are those who live by hunting and killing, and there are also vast numbers of creatures, hyenas, vultures who live off the hunting the hunting of others these latter less imaginative types are often incapable of doing the work that is essential for the creation of power they understand early on though that if they wait long enough they can always find another animal to do the work for them do not be do not be naive at this very moment while you are slaving away on some project there are cult vultures circling above trying to figure out a way to survive and even thrive off your creativity it is useful, useless to complain about this or to wear yourself ragged with bitterness as Tesla did. Better to protect yourself and join the game. Once you have established a power base, become a vulture yourself and save yourself a lot of time and energy. Of the two poles of this game, 
You can be one can be illustrated by the example of the explorer Vasco Núñez de Balboa. Balboa had an obsession, the discovery of El Dorado, a legendary city of vast riches. Early in the 16th century, after countless hardships and brushes with death, he found evidence of a great and wealthy empire to the south of Mexico in present-day Peru. You know, this guy probably didn't realize that as much as it was important to find the treasure, it was equally as important to keep the secret of where it was hidden. Early in the 16th century, after countless hardships and brushes with death, he found evidence of a great and wealthy empire to the south of Mexico in present-day Peru. By conquering this empire, the Incan, and seizing its gold, he would make himself the next Cortes. The problem was that even as he made discovery, as he made this discovery, word of it spread amongst hundreds of other conquistadors. He did not understand that half the game was keeping it quiet and carefully watching those around him. Half the game was finding the treasure, but also half the game was keeping it a secret and watching those around him carefully and watching his surroundings and see, and, see, and see the different types of people that are around him. The hyenas, the vultures. These, peop these animals have characteristics that humans have. You just need to differentiate the lions from the sheep, from the wolves, from the hyenas, from the vultures. In, in, in the jungle, there's these types of animals, but in real life, there's also humans that have those characteristics. You see? But that's as far as I go today. Um, peace.